All right. Man, this is uh, take two. Take two. We, we are, are still unwound. We are still unwound. Auburn and Alabama still unwound from last week. And our last video got unwound. Somehow. It did. Somehow we, we, we had some technical difficulties that... I know they had hearings up on, on Capitol Hill today about Facebook. Maybe they're mad at us because we're growing so fast. Man, they they really try to turn us upside down there. Valley Morgan's back, at least. Thank you for coming back. Thank the Lord. She saw uh, us uh, turning well, over. But that, the here's the the deal is uh, Auburn and Alabama both won last weekend. They did. And they got big games this weekend, right? They did. You know, well, I don't know. Auburn's playing Alabama State, so I hopefully uh, that'll be an easier uh, game for Auburn. Now, Alabama... Uh, Ar who are they playing? Uh, Arkansas State. All right, yeah, and we'll, we'll we may get to some uh, football picks in a little bit, but you know, you and I were talking about a little bit ago about the you know the Supreme Court stuff going on. Pretty fascinating part of our uh, our democracy here is is the Senate's trying to confirm this guy. But man, you talk about. I mean, we have lost all common sense of decency with some of these senators. I swear. Yeah, I feel like anything anything involved in politics is going to be fighting. And you know what's so sad and is that, this guy is obviously the smartest guy in the room and non-political. So it's like, I why are we? I think they train him to do that. As soon as you get into politics, you got to learn how to how to uh, you know hate the other person and talk bad about them and absolutely dig a hole, throw them in there, throw dirt on their head, everything. Absolutely. So crazy stuff. If you're watching that, that's I mean that's big stuff and. Uh, the Alabama Hammer's here. What's up, Hammer? Uh, April Sharp, Fish, good to good see to you. Good to see you. Absolutely. Mike Slocum, uh, Candace Duck, R. Kelly, uh, sharing words with us, but we'll... Yeah, we're, before we get into some of this personal finance stuff, I uh, want to share you a little story about a guy. Hopefully, we're going to have him on the show here in a couple weeks. Yeah, this guy's... This is a crazy story, huh? It, it, and, and there is a chance we have him on the show in, uh, in a couple weeks, but he is Hassan al Kantar. And he is a uh, refugee, a Syrian refugee, who is... You remember the movie The Terminal with Tom Hanks? Yeah. Right? The guy lived in the airport. He lived in the airport. And this guy, Hassan Al-Kantar, has been living in the uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia airport for the last, what, six months? The guy's living in the airport in, in Kuala Lumpur. Lumpur, in what country is that in? In Malaysia. Malaysia. And what's fascinating about him is that he's in the arrivals area of... Of the airport, in other words, not where all the stores are and all the fun stuff. This dude is in the like, like the very. There's no stores. The area that they before immigration that has nothing there, and so he is relying on the help of the of the people that work like cleaning crews and stuff like that to do his laundry. He's sleeping on the floors. He is. Uh, Thank God Air Asia is giving him three meals a day. Unfortunately, as he says, the three meals a day are the same chicken and rice for every meal. And he's been there how long? Six months. Six months in uh, a tr in the Malaysian airport. Could you imagine? He's living there right and he's now. A, he, he's an ex and, and it's because he's a refugee and he can't leave, right? He can't leave. He, he was living in the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, as a uh, marketing guy for an insurance. In Dubai? In Dubai. His Syrian passport expired, but during this time there at UAE, the reason it's expired is he can't go back because he doesn't want to uh, obviously join the army of Bashar al uh, the, uh, the I guess it's the president, whatever you want to call him, of, that is accused of a lot of crimes against yeah. humanity, if you will. But anyway, so his passport's expired. The only problem is when he got to Kuala Lumpur, they won't let him in because guess what? He doesn't have a valid passport. And so if he goes back to Syria, they're going to uh, put him in jail. So he's kind of a quandary. He don't want to go back there. And I think, yeah, I think you're definitely in a quandary if you're uh, trapped in a Malaysian airport. But now I do think he's so bored. What I loved is on the hundredth day he was there. He's so bored. He started filling out a long application to uh, join NASA's mission to Mars. He figured I have all the time in the world. Why not just start applying for everything? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so yeah. anyway, yeah, he's not going anywhere. Hopefully we can get him That's on crazy. the uh, be crazy to get show. him on the show. Absolutely, Drew. How are you, man? Uh, one of the most, he actually has one of the most beautiful spots in Turks and Caicos and a uh, very good entrepreneur out of Memphis. He nice. owns uh, uh, a bunch of uh, sports clips, franchises, and just a phenomenal businessman. But if you're looking, uh, beachhousebungalow.com. Man, Drew, I can't say enough about it. Jason Bramblett, the pride of North Carolina, good to see you. Yeah, we got our buddy Michael Bruno and Cassie Mingle uh, and Melanie Fizel. Absolutely. He's joined in. Well, tell me uh, a little bit about what interest rates have been doing this week. Uh, rates uh, 
been kind of moving sideways still, a little bit up, a little bit down, nothing really to speak of. Uh, a couple of days, they, they got worse, a couple of days they improved. So overall, not a whole lot of change there, but we're still kind of uh, creeping towards that 5%, which they expect us to be at by the end of the year. And they're thinking maybe 5.5% by mid to end of 2019. Say that again, 5.5? About 5.5%. Yikes. Now, and we've talked about it before that in – there won't be major disruption to the the market until we hit what five point eight percent, right? Right, absolutely. So, so we're looking at about five and a half, and then we get into uh, you know some some areas at the end of next year where they're talking about other things happening. So uh, don't know if rates will move further or or um, further than that, but well, I hope not. I mean, what I hope is a slow and steady. We talked about last week. You know, the Trump administration is trying to settle this down, uh, and they're yeah. trying to urge them to slow it down. Yeah, I think they're seeing the signs right now uh, of what's coming down the road, and and they're trying to get involved. And I think I think it's interesting that they are going to you know try to to slow this down a little bit and not move as quickly as we did the first part of this year. Well, ho certainly, I, because it was very. I mean, because we are seeing a very tightening of the market, you know, and this plays into you guys too. Uh, that we're seeing a across the country, I think, to a large degree. Now, granted, when you hear any media say uh, everything or the entire market slowing down, there are pockets of the market in every market that are actually doing gangbusters and have lots of inventory. Or, you know, yeah, it's the, just, yeah. The thing it's is, totally is, is that the market is still really good. I mean, we still have the basic principles of supply and demand. Okay, so supply is actually low right now. So that's going to help the equation, right? And demand, we actually have room to improve demand because mortgage credit, uh, mortgage credit availability is still a little bit low compared to what it could be, right? Because well, yes, we retracted so much from where we were 10 years ago that we, and we're starting to open up some new programs. So some mortgage credit is coming back on the market. So that's going to increase demand. So you got Correct. supply in a good spot. You got the ability to increase demand, so we still have the makings of a good market. Well, you know, and I had a guy uh, call me the other day that watches the show, and he was asking me this question: "Was you know what? I got this rental property. It's it's appreciated. It's gone up over the last two or three years substantially. Should I go ahead and sell it?" And what his mindset was: his mindset was living in two thousand eight. We don't have the makings of a two thousand eight market, a two thousand eight bubble, if you will. We're going to have normal fluctuations in the market, but we got to get that mindset out of our head. Look, this guy's cash flowing on his investment every month. He's making money on the investment. Why would he? My question to him was, why would you sell it? Yeah, and I think I think you also got to keep in mind the uh, basic principles of investing. Like, how, how is, is it time or timing? Okay, if you try to time the market, more than likely you're going to lose. <laughs> but if you've got time... You're always going to win, right? Absolutely. And, and we're going to come back out of all this greater than you were. Because keep it this way. Look, we talk about it every week. Two and a half, three percent is inflation anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? And so your investment's pretty good. If somebody, especially dealing with that guy, yeah, he's getting it paid down by someone else. Yeah, and it's good to diversify because he's got, he's got some money in real estate. He might have some money in the stock market. So if there's problems in the housing market, the real estate's going to suffer. But the stock market may be fine. If there's problems in the stock market, then the stock market stocks may suffer, but absolutely the housing may be fine. So it's good to spread that out. And again, if you got time, then you can ride out the dips. Well, it's no different with it, with the stock market. What do we talk about all year long? I mean, I bailed out of so many stocks earlier this year because I made a little bit of money. But had I ridden them out, I'd have doubled, tripled my money on these same stocks like WWE. Right. I mean, yeah. right. And so I got out at a time and in real estate. It's no different. In fact, if WWE falls at some point, which invariably it will, Howard Cannon, good to see you, uh, Governor. Um, if, when it falls, it will. It could tumble. Right. Whereas real estate has an intrinsic value there that's going to probably be a safer investment. Yeah. And, and you're talking about the WWE, which is like one component, one stock, one company in this country. But you're talking about the housing market, which is a huge component of how yeah, we live. A huge component of the overall economy. Correct. Massive. So, so I, obviously much safer there. But now looking at stocks, just real quick, I did pull <laughs> up uh, Nike today. And the reason I pulled it up is the story behind Nike right now is that they have brought on Colin Kaepernick to lead a marketing campaign around Colin His, Kaepernick. Oh, Colin Kaepernick sacrificed Cry me a river. If anybody can really tell me that Colin Kaepernick has sacrificed anything. Stand for something 
Even if it sacrifices Stanford everything. Stanford something. Right? Yeah. Something oh, yeah. like that. Oh, Stanford making, what? What is it? Twenty million? How many millions of dollars he's made over his career? Yeah. And now he stands for what? It's going to be interesting because uh, they are kicking off this marketing campaign. They just leaked it out yesterday. They're kicking it off tonight because the uh, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Atlanta Falcons kick off the NFL season tonight, and Nike is going to lead this marketing campaign and push it out there. So it's going to be interesting to see the uh, the reaction. But you had some comments. What dropped three dollars? Yeah, dropped was, three dollars, which is about a dollar for every dollar they drop. It was about a billion dollars in market cap. And so, in other words, it would become the most expensive marketing campaign. I don't know what they're paying him, but it's not $3 billion, I guarantee yeah. you. And so, but at the same time, here's the thing that Nike's got to understand. If Nike's apparel was the best and I had no other options, here's the thing. I'm going to buy from companies I really don't, I don't want to hear about your political leanings if, with my companies, yeah. right? And yeah. so, I go in with my daughter to buy some athletic shoes. I'm not given all things being equal, and I see Under Armour, Adidas, Nike, I promise you, and this is not a political statement, it's just saying I'm not going to select Nike because I really don't care. Well, and you know, there, there, it is clearly is a racial uh, statement. So they said in the article that I read, they said that most, uh, I think 60% of their sales come from overseas, and overseas markets see think that america doesn't handle racial issues well so that somehow is a positive for this marketing <laughs> campaign yeah and i think i think howard cannon brings it up that nike likes uncomfortable campaigns because they stuck with tiger during when everybody else jumped ship he's right and where i think nike's misreading this is we're in a different environment uh and howard i, I it's interesting um you know to say they stuck with tiger i think after that their whole golf line failed miserably but now that he's doing Back. something again, they might be picking him up again. I don't know the details of that. They didn't but double I'm down sure on him. Their but, golf line failed. But he's Tiger right failed. though that that was a different environment we were in now because I think the consumer has far more options with with all these different companies. Yeah, Chuck, I agree with you. Um, Chuck's saying that that he'll buy some Nike stock because Americans are lazy; they won't boycott because there are some people calling to boycott, and um, you know. I think that that that's is true. Very, oh. very. Howard says they sold their golf line, so that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So, um, but anyway, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see what how how people respond to it. You know, the the article that I read said this was uh, marketing brilliance. So apparently, well, a lot of people are, are thinking this is a great idea. But you know, Candace talks about it's not a political statement, but it is in the sense that. The overcoming this, he should not be your spokesperson if, 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 because what he was arguing about from the day one yes. was already being investigated by the Obama administration by by a black president and a black attorney general. Yes, and I did. I watched the commercial. I watched the one that they they they, uh, I guess leaked on YouTube or whatever. And it is about uh, overcoming adversity, and it is a great story. And you don't even know that Kaepernick is narrating it until you know seventy five percent the way through it. But I still think you're just you're putting Colin Kaepernick as the uh, the poster child yeah. for this marketing campaign. Just silly. And there was a lot of debate on you know whether it was a racial issue, a political issue, whether or, or not. Now they've come out and said there is no kneeling. So obviously, what he did wasn't a great idea. But he got his name out there. No, and, and quite frankly, knock yourself out, Nike, if you want to do it. I, I really yeah. don't care. I, I'm just saying that that. I, as a, as a consumer, will make a decision. It's okay to make that decision because I don't want to be involved with, with uh, companies where I could care less about their... Yeah, and I think, and you know, and Taylor says it's brilliant. Nike care less about who's burning the products. So, again, this goes back to something that has happened in Hollywood where any news is good That's news. Right. If If we're talking about you and saying you're terrible and we hate you, or we're talking about you. Well, actually, if we're talking about you saying we love you and you're great, you're not going to get as much press as if we hate you. No, because I, I don't think I, it's overplayed that the right does this. Like, oh, the right's going to boycott. Listen, people, stop boycotting on all sides. I'm tired right. of boycotting. So, because I like things too much. You know, like, like if, let's say I'm on the Chick Fil A side. I love a Chick Fil A sandwich. So that's why they actually make the best sandwich. That's the thing that I think people are missing here. If Nike made the best. People would overcome it because I, I give you a case in point. My wife, man, she went nuts about the. Uh, I'm gonna tell my leanings here, being kind of to the right, but she was gonna boycott Target all up until she went to Walmart twice, and then she's like, 
Well, <laughs> I think I like Target again. <laughs> right? So, in other words, I, I think people just got to give up on this boycotting because I don't think it helps anybody. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's true. The, the boycotting is not going to help anybody. But, uh, you know, along the lines of what everybody's saying, Nike did do a good job of tying in the message. That's and, right. And, uh, you know, and then they're picking... Kaepernick, which is going to raise eyebrows, which is going to have people talking about it. Above average quarterback it's got us at talking most. About it. Oh, it's got us like, talking about it. Why do we even care? Hey, he's not SEC, so we don't care. <laughs> uh, he was a big dude, though. Well, this would be something that uh, old Howard Cannon will like to talk about and Chuck Bittinger. Uh, tax law changes that as we go into the second half of the year, we wanted to share with you uh, some of the tax law changes that we're going to remind you about so that as you prepare getting all your stuff together for your Tax return, because if you're like me, January 1st, man, I'm ready to get this over with so I can start the new year. Yeah, yeah. So you're going to have a lot of things to look at. Um, the biggest one, well, there's a lot of big things, but the standard deduction is doubling. It's right? doubling. It's and the essentially the the for a single, it goes from sixty three fifty to twelve thousand uh, for an individual, and from twelve thousand to twenty four thousand. For couples. For couples. And so what you're going to be able to do for most people is eliminate, for over 90% are going to be able to not have to worry about the mortgage tax deduction or any of those deductions. Well, not worry about them. You're, you're just not, there's not going to be any point in doing it, right? Because now let's say your your total uh, your total write-offs before was 17000 Well, you wouldn't take the 12000 You'd write all the seventeen off, but now your standard's going to be twenty four, so you're losing these deductions. There's no point in itemizing um the mortgage interest or the charitable contributions and things like that, right? Absolutely. And so, and, and the charitable contributions are, are going to be fine uh, in the sense of, the, of course, Congress knew that they, they were going to face a lot of special interest backlash had they not uh, left that the same. But mortgage interest reduction only up to $750,000. they are trying to cap a lot of this. I don't think for the most people, unless you're in a in Boston any of these major big markets that you're going to have some issues in some states that have high state income tax, and we'll tell you why in a minute. But the one thing that I think has been missed by the public, because we all we want to talk about is the positive things. On the negative side, to a slight degree, where you're not going to see the full benefit is the personal exemptions going away. Uh, so basically, a family of three like myself, I went back and just made sure I was right on this last year. Twelve thousand, there's three of us. So $12,000 of my income was exempt from being taxed. So it's not a straight deduction. It's not a real deduction. It's just exempt, right? So that's going away. So that will have some effect uh, on neutralizing some of the benefit, but still it's obviously a win for the consumer or for the taxpayer, that is. Uh, you know, I'm sure yeah. Courtney's excited as she's joined us. Yeah, you know, and, and some of the big big things, I know we've got the, the state and local tax deduction, but the unreimbursed business expenses are going to be a big thing. For me specifically, uh, you know, for a w 2 employee, you are no longer allowed to write off business expenses. Yeah, we used to have a 2% floor on that and would say anything over 2%, you're, you know, you could write off, uh, especially if you had a major expense. No more. And so, because they're saying we're giving you more of the standard deduction, you're going you're gonna to have yeah. to do it. And the hard part is that standard deduction is at $24,000. you are not going to be able to go, okay, now can I kick back in those expenses? They're phased out till all this is phased out through 2025. So big thing there to be making sure you're uh, uh, taking advantage of. The $750,000 cap on mortgages, uh, for most people, obviously not a big deal. But you can take two mortgages. Let's say you have a second home. Yeah. Uh, you can do that. Because a lot of these folks that have second homes, they also uh, have a good bit of equity in both of them. So you're still going to fall under that seven hundred fifty. dollars Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and obviously... Um you know, that's obviously a much larger tax bracket up there with, with that change. Well, you know, what I always hated was, was happening on those miscellaneous deductions. Man, I'd have to go back and look what, what tax prep was, what investment expenses I had, yeah. those type things. Man, I was like, man, this stinks. So now you can eliminate all that. And either way, the man's getting his money. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how these tax, tax laws shake out. But, uh, you know, you know yeah. moving expenses... Gone. Yep. And you used to be able to write off even your, your car expenses during moving, right? Right. So you could get some mileage there. I mean, here's the thing. It, we're doing better at making this actually more readable. Anybody don't know, I, I was a tax attorney in a former life. And I'm telling you, as a tax attorney with a tax law degree, I don't understand the tax law, right? I mean, it's so complicated that 
hardly anybody can understand. I think this is a good thing. Take away, let's take away these deductions, fill in the gap somewhere else, and make it easier. Because what was happening was that people will fill in a return not fully understanding it, and think, oh man, I can get this deduction. So they'll put a number in there. Not understand they really weren't qualified to take it. Yeah. And then guess what? Triggers an audit. Yep. And so there you go. Now this is one, especially if you're on the Gulf Coast, uh, you're in some area of Florida. Anywhere where natural disasters come in, that deduction is gone uh, going forward with the exception of presidentially declared disaster areas. You do get the deduction. And the key there, and I've, in our notes here, I've highlighted the word presidential. Why? Because just because a governor declares it a disaster zone does not yeah. So mean the president has to come in. The president has to. Trump, Obama, whoever was in office must say, uh, or Trump, uh, I guess... We're looking forward. We're not looking backwards on this. Uh, I don't think Obama's going to come back and declare. No. Uh, and then the last one is, for anybody that's gotten a divorce, you spent a lot of money, a lot of money on that divorce attorney, and then you had to pay her or him. Usually it's her. And that deduction, gone. Alimony. Gone. Gone. You know, the courts have really disfavored alimony for years because uh, it's such an antiquated idea because women are actually back in the workforce better than ever, right? I mean, uh, this is not a sexist statement, but they are. They're working more than they did in the 50s, 60s. I mean, I remember representing a guy right before I got out of the law. It was one of the funniest cases. The guy had, I felt bad for the guy, and we didn't really have a legal argument. We walked into the judge. He had been paying for like 50 years alimony to this woman who refused to get remarried to the same guy she had cohabitated with for 50 years and wanted her alimony still. Just to keep him from paying alimony. I thought, man, judge, come on. <laughs> Something wrong about one? it. No, I lost that no, one. Lost that one. Absolutely. Although he did say he was getting a deduction. So Yeah. But no more. No more. So that's it for the deductions, man. Next yeah. thing, um pulled up an article today on you know, these are seven things they picked out. Obviously there's there's plenty of things, but seven things to do before applying for a mortgage and stuff to look at, stuff to think about. Number one is know what you will need as far as docs required. Yeah, big uh, one. This, is a, this is a big one, but we're basically, you know, the simplest way to say this, and it applies to anybody, is we are documenting your income and we're documenting your assets. And where it's coming from and where it's so, going, right? You know more than anybody about your income and how you get paid, right? So you know if you're on a salary, pretty simple, pay stub, right? Absolutely. If you are if you are self-employed and you have to file a tax return and get a CPA and give him all this stuff to figure out what your income is, then we're going to need those tax returns. You know, that applies for commission too. So, you know, know what you need, pay stubs, tax returns, bank statements. Uh, bank statements are all pages of the bank statement. And do you recommend okay. them just during this whole process, holding those, every time you get the pay stub, don't go looking for them, get the pay stub, put it somewhere where you know you can have access to it. Yeah, a lot of things are le electronic right now, but uh, yes, hang on to everything. But uh, basically, pay stubs, bank statements, tax returns, W-2s, all this good stuff. Um, it's not that big a deal. It's not uh, a scary process. We're just we're just asking for just a document. Income yeah, assets, I, right? and and just one thing is too is with your loan officers. I, I've noticed too, y'all are advocates. See, here's the thing that I think a lot of people miss is that your loan officers. Are, are advocates for you getting the loan. They're not going to bend the rules or anything like that, but give them everything. Remember, these guys don't get paid until you get the loan. Yeah. So they have no incentive to deny you the yeah. loan. Yeah, and now we're, we're not going to, uh, you know, skirt the laws to get loans done. But if there is uh, something that doesn't necessarily need to be in the file, then obviously we've got to figure out another way around it. Well, um, I need to. You need to know the information too, because I, I remember as a lawyer, I love when people would always omit something and go, "Oh, I forgot to tell you." Well, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of important. Uh, yeah, you yeah. Know, For example, so, if you you know if you pull five thousand dollars out of the mattress from home and <laughs> deposited that in your bank statement, we can't figure out where that money came from. So we're probably going to need to get a gift from a family member. Absolutely. Okay? So that that's just one example. But give us everything. We'll put it together. Next thing is know how much you can spend, right? So your this is your debt to income. Oh, now, has that gone up? I know we had talked about before a 28, 36 rule. Yeah, I mean, right now we're probably up closer to 40-ish. 40 40-ish uh, what? 40%. Of my income? Gross income. 
Gross, gross income. income. That's for everything. So typically your house payment is going to be that 28 to 30 percent. And then everything is going to be car payments, credit card payments, student loans. Everything is going to be encumbered in that 43 percent. Well, uh, hey, so under 40 percent is good. Understand the market you are buying. What do you mean by that? Understand the market you're buying in is uh, a lot of times in Alabama, we don't really have uh, huge, huge things to think about there. But there are some areas, like Florida. Florida's close to us. Yep. Florida has a lot of condos. Um, sometimes these condos maybe don't manage their budget well, or they don't have enough reserves. So sometimes we lose we, our lights. We, sometimes we do lose our lights. Yeah. Uh, they are motion sensitive. Hey, oh, yeah. we're back. Uh, so, so you could be required to put more money down you know, on that condo if, if it's non-warrantable. So, and certain areas, too. I mean, I think one of the big things is because insurance plays such a big part of the mortgage. Yes. Yeah, so flood insurance in some areas will... will Wind, hail, uh, um, all that. Taxes. Taxes. You know, property taxes could be much higher in other areas. Well, they Alabama's, are in Florida. Yeah, right. Alabama is, is very low. We're very reasonable. To, compared to, to Absolutely. other places. So, so understand the market you're buying in. Raise your credit score. Okay, so this is a good one. If you have time... Okay, let's say a three to six window, three to six month window. And this is, let's say, a first time home buyer that is, is, has a lease that is not going to run out for a little while. Okay, they've got time to work on their credit scores. So they could pay down some credit card balances um, and get them under that 30% rule. So you want to be at 30% of the credit limit um, or, or improve, you know, try to get some maybe some collections or some negative items gotcha. removed. There's there's some things we could do there. And and you know, I love talking about credit karma is, is one of those areas because when you start this process, they're going to really be pulling your credit and, and dinging it. Mm -hmm. uh, now within a what is it a thirty day window? Uh, you can you can talk to as many mortgage yeah. folks as you want, as many mortgage companies as you want within a thirty day window. Same thing with a car loan. Uh, all all the credit pulls you get there. Absolutely. So you can are going to be combined as one. So it's not going to hit you every the hedgehog single time. made it. Hmm. Um, but credit karma is going to be a different score. Okay, so just be careful. I know people want to call and say, hey, you know, give me some rates. I got a six fifty credit karma, and what can you do for me? Yeah. Well, let's keep credit karma for what it's worth. Credit karma is a great spot. Anybody wonders, how are they making money? They're making money because they're going to be able to send you, or not send you, within the app, give you offers on credit cards and those type of things. Just don't do those things. Uh, just take them for what they're worth. They're going to give you a TransUnion score and a Experian. Yeah, and it's it's a V or score. Equifax. It's only like 24 two. month. They don't have collections. So there are some differences. Just know that it's, it's a great uh, indicator. It might be a good tool for you to use. Hey, when you're a 450... Yeah, on Credit Karma is a good chance you're not getting that mortgage. I don't. I've never heard of 450 on Credit Karma. Uh, but pay off debt. I've seen 500. So. Number five is paying off debt. Um, you know, this is one thing that I would I would suggest that you talk to a loan officer first because let's say you've got a uh, four thousand dollar car loan and you feel like that's going to help your credit score. Yeah. Well, it's not necessarily going to help your credit score. Obviously, it's going to get rid of the car payment, so that could improve your debt to income. But it's also, uh, it might look better to have that $4,000 sitting in the bank account, sitting in a savings account instead of, you know, paying that car off. So let's talk to a loan officer first before we pay off any major Absolutely. debt. Absolutely. And I think one of the biggest things we talk about all the time is, is, uh, is also not opening lines of credit. Well, I guess we're are we going to get to that in a minute. Yeah, we're going to get to that. Okay. The, number six is have your taxes in order. And I've got this problem right now with somebody, uh, you know, going through the income. We asked for tax returns. They hadn't filed in two years. <laughs> People, you have to understand that, you know, the mortgage business has tightened up and we are analyzing the ability to repay. So we got to have, I mean, what, yeah. what, what happens in that situation? We have to be reporting your income to the government. Okay, so let's say I filed a valid extension for my 2000, let's say it would be 17. I filed an extension for my 2017 returns. What do I need to do now? Do you, can they still get a mortgage if they haven't filed 17? It depends on the business that you're in. It depends on how long you've been doing that business. Depends on if you are estimating to owe any money. Yeah, no, well, I think on what, those 2017 taxes, because if you if you're estimating that you owe money, then we need to show that you got that money to pay. And one of the things that he's talking about is that, and the reason I think where you're headed with this is that usually those are self employed. The, the extenders 
are usually self-employed. Self-employed, uh, right. commission. Um, and not W-2 employees with, with uh, a little di dividend income, a little, in you know, yeah. that's not them. Yeah, that, that are filing 1040EZ, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. not them usually, but... But you some people know. just don't want to pay. So, yeah. yeah I mean. Some people just don't do these things. And you so, wouldn't believe how many times we've seen... Uh, uh, all right, so Courtney... Yes, you cannot use the income from 2017 oh. if not filed, but that could be okay if you've been in the line of work long enough and we can use income from previous years. If you've only been in this job for two years and 16 and 17 are the only two years that you've been doing the job and you haven't filed huh. 17... Yeah, I not, promise you my first year was not, the best. Yeah, we're not... We're phenomenal. We're not able to work with It was that. all borrowed money, too. I was paying myself. Yeah. So that, that, is, that is definitely true that you cannot use the, the income... If you haven't filed that, now we're talking about self-employed, okay? Because we have to have your tax return show that. Now, if you're W two, obviously, you know. Yeah, and I, we may one not thing I have I, to get into the one tax thing returns. I wanted to bring up and ask you is, you know, like my wife has a W two. She's a pharmacist, has a normal job. She's a thing, and you know, obviously, I'm a you know, I have an LLC set up and paid a W two to a certain point. But the question for you is this. A lot of couples think they automatically have to apply in the name of both cup people. And that's not necessarily the case. And sometimes it's easier if one can qualify, go ahead and just get it in one's name, right? Yeah, I had that conversation today. I had a, a couple that's got a, a lot of student loans and there's a lot of questions around, you know, what, what are the payments? When do they start? Are they deferred? How much of the payments going to be when they do start? I mean, so do you eliminate that completely when that, I mean? Yeah, so basically I took one person completely off the loan, which simplified the process, took a lot of stuff off the credit report, took a whole, you know, person off the application. So you're talking to, you're eliminating uh, pay stubs, you're eliminating the W-2s for them, you're eliminating any questions about their income, any questions about their credit. So you're taking that off. And that spouse can be on title. Well, that's right. I mean, so they still, so hold on. That yeah, spouse, so, still, so still in other words, the house together. in my case, I'm in the best position, right? Because I own the house. I just don't have to pay the mortgage That's on right. It. She owes. It. Yeah. Yeah. That's she incredible. She pay it. So we are really having fun with the we, lights today. We are having a lot of fun. But luckily, that was not... Those are our yeah. uh, production but lights. Hey, if you've been in hanging in here for the last 20 minutes, you have seen the lights go in and out, which is fun. So labor taxation theft that came for the couch auction, ladies. Not sure about Zachary Green, huh? Yeah. I mean, the I, what they're saying, they don't like auction. the idea that we get taxed on our labor. Oh. Me either. I hate all taxes. So The okay. Alabama Hammer, I know, does. Avoid any major purchases is the last item on the list. And that means uh, going out and getting you know, a credit card. Let's say you're going to Rooms to Go, right? Because you want to put some stuff in the house. Happens all the time. $7,000 worth of furniture, okay? Put it on a credit card. Well, we're not spending any of our cash to the bank. Well, you're adding a, a monthly payment. You're, you're hitting the credit. You know, so don't do that. Courtney, you see that too, I, I would think, don't you? Uh, where you're getting all the way down through it, and then all of a sudden they decide to go to... Bass, Bassett Furniture and buy them a bedroom suit. Oh, yeah. That or a car. A car. Guys are the cars. You should truck or whatever, right? Or, or man, a uh, 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 Home Depot for the washer and dryer. One thing I wanted to ask you was about cash purchases because a lot of folks think, well, if I'm just paying cash, it doesn't matter. Why does a cash purchase matter just as much as opening, say, a, a uh, new line of credit? Cordy said yes. And then Mandy Gunn, all Britain, joined us. It's good to see you. What was that? Cash purchases. Because so, a lot yeah, of folks think purchases. I'm opening a new credit. That's one thing. But what if I want to go buy well, a again, new... Well, yeah, again, I go back to the, the, you know, I personally would rather see that cash in your savings account at closing, right? Because that looks better. That can't, I mean, can't we just wait a couple weeks? Just wait a couple weeks. Well, like Courtney's saying, don't buy stuff I mean, for a house you don't own. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Don't buy stuff for a house you don't own. I mean, this is one of the biggest purchases you're going to make. And how often are you going to do this? You're going to do it again in three months? You're going to do it. No, it's probably six, eight years. You're going to go buy that, whatever you're buying for cash. What is it, a sofa? You're going to go buy that 4000 Yeah, just go buy that in a few weeks. Wait. So leave the money. Um, leave the money in the bank so it looks a little bit better for the file. And we don't have to, you know, go to any lengths to document that. Absolutely. So, I mean, just because it's very interesting, a lot of folks think it's just uh, borrowing that matters, but it's also the cash. Yeah, yeah, and we don't want to see a lot of cash going in and out of the account. Because? Because we can't, we don't know where the money's coming from. And another thing that people don't realize, because a lot of people like to move money between accounts. Because it's cool. Oh, man. We've had some that have four bank accounts, 
and, and they're they're moving money back and forth through all these accounts. Well, we got to document all of them. So just stop in the coming in the coming months. You think well, this fall. Let's say if it's right now. Right now, if you're watching this later, it's what September the sixth. Yeah. So if we're buying in December, now might be a good time to stop that movement. Yeah, yeah. Just think about anything that you are that you're doing something. You're going to make the process more difficult. There's several scenarios, right? Anything you're. you're that you're going to make the process more difficult. So let's just make it easy. Let's keep the bank statements clean. Let's not be moving a bunch of money in and out. Let's don't go shopping for new credit cards, car loans, boats. Let's boats? Put, Can't buy a boat? Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's put all our effort and energy into buying this house, make it Absolutely. as easy as possible, and then we'll... Go get all the credit and boats and RVs and everything else after close. Well, and I, you know, I'm going back. I mean, I couldn't have said it better. Don't buy stuff for a house you don't own. I know, right? But then buy everything. It would be my yeah. wife's uh, philosophy. Then go get as much as you want. You know, uh, one of these next things, one of the la last things before we get to our football picks, because those are the most important things of the week. But uh, am I paying? You know, there's a good article in the uh, Wall Street Journal uh, I, I was reading this week. Troy Mingle. Um and Daniel Reed, one of the great football players from the University of Virginia. Uh, good to see you, Daniel. I haven't seen him in, obviously, 20 years. But uh, anyway, uh, am I paying too little for stuff? You know, there's a race to the bottom amongst all these companies. Yeah. To, with the exception, I love people quote Amazon and all these big ones. Look, they don't have, they have more money they know what to deal with, so they're not worried about it. But yeah. Movie Pass is a good example. Man, I wish, and I wish Taylor was still on here. I don't know if she is. Uh, but she was a huge fan of Movie Pass, and now it's... It's gone. I read the article about it saying that, um, you know, it started out as a, a, a niche program or niche program, right? About 35 bucks or 100 bucks it a month. It completely changed in industry. Yeah, and now it was 10 bucks a month, and now it's bankrupt, Because right? the established companies were able to go, okay, that's where we're headed. We're going to have to change. And guess what? You're going to be out of business, Movie Pass. Great idea. And then, you know, they even went down to the very end and borrowed... I, I was at twenty million dollars, whatever, to stay afloat for one week, and it just didn't and work. So, and so, Movie Pass had to drop the price so low for people to get interested that they had to drop it so low that they stopped. They stopped making Take money. Take Blue Apron. These companies that are the shipping costs outrageous. But so, the, the, what the whole article was talking about was not, hey, let's don't use these companies or whatever. But the, it was ultimately a question that there is no answer to, but because it's each personal. Are we really doing good for the consumer by having a race to the bottom? Because what ends up happening is a lot of these employees of these companies end up losing their jobs real quick because those companies get under money pressure, right? When when all the, when it's so cheap that they can't afford even a basic employee. Yeah, the competition is so is so stiff that they're actually we're actually cannibalizing each other, right? Um, so. Like even with these uh, meal boxes, yep, right? meal so boxes. People will get the meal boxes for two weeks and All then right. cancel them, and then uh, sign up with somebody else, right? Absolutely, they're they're going to go to somebody else. And so what you're doing is you're this great idea that started off. And what's really funny is they talk about is that a lot of these small upstarts don't ever get the credit for changing an industry or changing a business model because and they're broke, right? But then here comes. Hopefully, somebody to take their place that will become. I mean, take Netflix for example. Netflix didn't rise out of nowhere, but from the standpoint of major business, they did. Yeah. They, they 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 changed an industry that was already started with Blockbuster and all these. Uh, uh, yeah, and they they and I guess there I guess there's an economy of scale, right? So they rose above these uh, pricing pressures, right? right? And yes. So so a lot of a lot of smaller companies still fight this, and they still. Uh, it's like a restaurant. It takes it takes a couple of years for a restaurant to earn, to, to make a profit, right? Well, so, they raised in the last year. Amazon Prime, Netflix, both raised their, their rates. And one thing they knew about me was I wasn't going to cancel. Yeah, you weren't going anywhere. because you were They already, were indispensable yeah, to me. Yeah, you're already ingrained in them. But Isn't that such an American thing to say? I, I'm addicted to two-day shipping. <laughs> yeah. Right? Which they suck at now. Because they're not, by the way, they're not have hitting. things right away. They are not hitting their two days. But anyway, one other thing I wanted to bring up about that was are the cheap things turning us into reckless spenders? In other words, we, we're so addicted to this, right? You know, I could probably do without Netflix now because I got YouTube TV and all that, right? Is it reckless for me to be spending that extra money just because it's cheap, right? And so in other words, but then you take that times every other thing that I'm that's out there, every the other three, reckless. four, five dollars. It's only three, four dollars. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, 
Or it's like True. my daughter. We got to go to the Dollar Tree. The only problem is she doesn't understand we're not buying one thing. Yeah. She wants nine things, and it's now nine dollars. Or when my wife has gone yeah, to... Yeah, we went to the Dollar Tree, though. Or it's like my wife saying she plays the penny slots. She goes, well, it's only 200 pennies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's $2. Yeah. <laughs> so she would never go to the two do dollar slot machine and play $2. But she'll play 200 pennies. Yes. Yeah. Because it's a penny machine. Well, that's the way She's they... going to kill me, by the way, for saying that. That's the way they bring you in, right? Uh, well, yeah, boy. But she's not addicted to gamble or anything, just so I don't get in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Uh, got to stay out of trouble. I got to do that. But football picks, man. Yeah, so what do we got? We got uh, this weekend. Man, I tell you what, Alabama looked good last week. I know you hate to say that. No, one guy looked great. I No, no. Wow. I'm sorry. Deontay Thompson played safety. Waddle is a freshman returning the football. <laughs> Damian Harris is a senior I'm just kidding. stud. I mean, they had a couple other runners. Najee Harris. Oh, golly. The punter? Oh, y'all didn't see the punter. I'm oh sorry. yeah, yeah. I'm did sorry. He, did he play? I don't even know if they have one. Man, if if it, I, I was talking to my son Brady last night, I think the average score for the rest of the year on Alabama is going to be forty-five to seven. Well, who's Wisconsin got this week? By the way, uh, Howard. Uh, yeah, Troy Mingle would know that too. Hey, because I tell you what, there is nothing. Man, I should say nothing better. Top ten traditions in all of college football: jump around, start of the fourth quarter. At Wisconsin, the whole—I mean—that place is rocking with jump around. Wisconsin, yeah, own Wisconsin. That's right. Yeah, they—they—they—they they, 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 they do good. Well, uh, I'm gonna let's talk picks. Yeah, so I got UGA in South Carolina. You know, I, we went to Georgia Tech, so this hurts me, but I'm taking UGA minus ten. Probably a pretty good bet, South Carolina. I mean, obviously a tough defensive squad. Uh, Probably the right play there. We don't know too much yet, obviously, about any of these teams. What do yet. you got? I got Arkansas State. I'm taking Arkansas State plus the 36 and a half. All right. So here's the problem. It's a trap game from an odds maker standpoint. Nick no. Saban never covers these. There's no way. He hasn't in the past, but he hasn't been able to score 45 at will. But he's I not going to get everybody hurt, though, here. The average either. score is going to be 45 to 7, okay. which is 38 I, points. I agree that with covers you. covers the 36. Oh, wait. Except that uh, Tua will not be playing this half the game, and guess who's back? Everybody's favorite, Jalen Hurts, is back. He'll still score forty in uh, the first half. All right, let's talk about one of mine that I got here. I got Kentucky plus fourteen at Florida. Kentucky always. I don't look. I don't even have to know anything about Kentucky to know that they play tough for some gosh awful reason at Florida at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. Take the Wildcats plus the points. You got two touchdowns, take it. Man, I'm telling you. Clemson, Texas A&M, this is going to be a great game. I'm not sure where it's at, but I am looking forward. Who's the new coach in Texas A&M? Florida State's Jimbo Fisher. Jimbo Fisher. So here's what's going to happen. Clemson's still going to win the game. A&M is going to cover the 12, though. We agree. Okay, I'm taking A&M plus 12. It's going to be an interesting – it's probably going to be Jimbo's biggest game – well, it's, a, it's definitely a test early, and, I mean, look at this. I mean, we are – hey, we got New Mexico. New Mexico. You will Mexico. blow New Mexico out, uh, well, by their standards. They're, I mean, what's great about Wisconsin, they're just big, and they love to barrel through you. And uh, Look, I don't know what the line is, but you're going to win by three touchdowns. Well, listen, next week we are going to talk about um, some of the uh, Fannie, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac conservatorship. Uh, they're still owned by the government, and and always will is making a ton of money. Supposedly, the taxpayers are making that money. Are you getting we'll that see. money back? Uh, big question of why they're not getting it back. We're going to get that information for you, and uh, we're going to slowly make a transition. See these guys right here. This guy here. You're going to see some new branding for the happy hour. Yeah, yeah. Looking as we transition, yeah, man. We're getting. Hey, we're kind of a big deal. We're kind of know? a big deal. We're we working are. on it. Um, um, but I appreciate you guys tuning in, and uh, we'll see you next Thursday at 4 o'clock. Let's do it. All right. Y'all have a great week, great weekend, and War Eagle. See you guys. Bye.